The Prime Minister has found himself in a row he wasn't expecting to happen with his own Home Secretary this week after she wrote an incendiary article for the Times which basically accused the cops of being very biased against some protesters and allowing others to get away with all sorts of things on the streets of London. Now, that particular point isn't that controversial. We've seen how Black Lives Matter protests were, were dealt with, how women protesting against, uh, against the Metropolitan Police were, were treated very heavy-handedly, yet other protesters seem to be allowed to run down the streets crying things like jihad and get away with it. So there is a question to answer for the police there, but it's, the problem is, is, is it the right person to be asked that question as the Home Secretary. The police are independent from the government, as they should be. While Suella Braveman does have an oversight role of the police, it is operationally independent and needs to be kept distant from government. So a big old row has blown up and frankly, number 10 are livid. They asked her to tone down the piece, take out some changes uh, and make, make, make some alterations, which she refused to do and just publish anyway. So now we've got two problems. One, a big row with the police and two, Rishi Sunak looking pretty weak. Now, some people in the Tory party want him to sack her on the spot for insubordination. They don't like her particularly device type of politics. Labour Party are going cock-a-hoop saying she should be sacked. What Suella Braveman wrote in that article was uh, reckless and irresponsible and at a time when the government should be working with our police force the Home Secretary is undermining them and when we should be trying to bring communities together Suella Braveman is dividing them and the Prime Minister seems to be too weak to take the decisive action that is now needed. And Rishi Sunak has ended up with a week where actually Keir Starmer began the week on the ropes. You know, he's, his was the party divided over Israel, divided over the situation in Gaza, and it's ended up with, a, frankly, a huge row that he could do without. There isn't really any consensus on what to do next. If he was going to fire Suella Braven, he probably should have done it yesterday. Now he looks like he's weak and reacting to a backlash from his own party. If he does sack her, he's got to deal with Suella's supporters on the right of the party who are going to go absolutely bananas. Now, Rishi Sunak isn't a strong leader. He's 20 points behind in the polls. He's trying to keep the very fractious Tory party coalition together and that means he can't risk upsetting any one wing of the party, which leaves him in a complete bind at the centre looking pretty weak. All of this row is because protesters tomorrow will march through the London on Armistice Day. The Prime Minister has asked for that, that march to be cancelled. The Home Secretary has said it's disrespectful and shouldn't go ahead. The police say they don't have any powers to stop protests and nor should they. You know, if freedom of speech comes at a price even if you don't like the things that are being said. The only way that that can be stopped is if there is intelligence that says there's a direct threat of severe public order and at the moment the cops are saying that intelligence isn't there. Now looking at that through a political lens, if there is trouble on the streets, the government will be able to say, well, you know, we kind of told you so, that this is why this march shouldn't have gone ahead. But however, other critics of the Home Secretary will say, actually, it's probably her fault for stirring up division. So this is a row that's not going to go away, and hopefully tomorrow will go off peacefully. But the police really are, you know, bringing in massive amounts of support from across the country, thousands of officers being drafted in to make, hopefully, make sure it doesn't. So Labour have got their own problems on the issue of Israel and Gaza. More than almost half of, uh, of Keir Starmer's MPs have now directly contradicted his position and said there should be an immediate ceasefire. Now, there's an argument to be made that actually Starmer standing up to his party shows quite how far they've changed since the Corbyn era when well, Jeremy Corbyn will literally be on the march tomorrow. Um, so he's trying to look like a, a sort of strong leader, but he's had, he has his own problems. We The Sun revealed this week that in fact one of the march organisers was until just a couple of days ago working in Labour HQ. He's now been let go as they said euphemistically, but Starmer really should be on the ropes of this. There was obviously an awful terrorist attack on the 7th of October by Hamas, which nobody um, would support or could support. And so another big problem for the coming down the line for Rishi Sunak and for Suella Braveman that could really bring tension to her head if he doesn't sack her this weekend is the fact that the Supreme Court will rule on Wednesday whether the Rwanda scheme to deport channel migrants immediately as they arrive off boats, small boats in the channel, to Rwanda to be processed, whether that can go ahead. If they win in the Supreme Court, it's a big moment for the government. They are really banking on this to try and turn around their political fortunes, to be seen to be doing something to stop the boats, which has been a major political issue for, for the last year. Rishi Sunak promised to do something, but he's been snarled up in the courts. If they lose, then the whole thing could end up being very fractious for the Tory party. And don't be surprised if we start to hear major calls for the Human Rights Act to be rewritten, for the, for the UK to leave the European Convention on Human Rights, which is part of the reason that this, 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 this policy would be 
be ruled illegal. So there's going to be a big old row about that. And some fear that Suella Braveman will simply just resign to lead that resistance. So you can't really say Rishi Sunak's a lucky general, can you? He came into, into government after the chaos of Liz Trust. He stabil stabilised things a bit. But the, the poll lead, he's still 20 points behind in the polls. He can't really seem to cut a break. Every single time something was going right for him, there's another row that comes out of nowhere. So it must be frustrating for him, but um, he's going to keep soldiering on, he says.